This video demonstrates the steps involved in performing the lip assay. Antigens are expressed in COS1 cells as recombinant ranilla luciferase or ROOC antigen fusions. Crude extracts are obtained and used without purification. The LIPS assay is initiated by incubating crude ROOC antigen extracts with patient sera in microtiter wells. The antibody antigen mixture is then transferred to a 96 well filter plate containing protein AG beads to capture IgG molecules. After washing the filter plate containing the protein AG beads, antibody bound ROOC antigen is measured by the addition of cylenterazine substrate, and light units are measured with a luminometer. Hi, I'm Dr. Katherine Chang from the Laboratory of Sensory Biology at the National Institute of Dental and Craniofacial Research. Today we will show you the procedure for LIPS, luciferase immunoprecipitation systems. We use LIPS in our laboratory to measure antibody titers in order to diagnose disease and or infection, substratify disease states, monitor vaccination, and other applications involved in generating antibody profiles. So let's get started. Prior to beginning transfection, plasmids for ranilla luciferase fusions are prepared in advance, as described in the BMC Biotechnology paper by Berbello et al., 2005. Plasmid DNA is prepared using a MIDI prep kit with a yield of 1 to 3 mg and stored as a 1 mg per milliliter stock solution at minus 20 degrees Celsius. COS1 cells used in transfection are cultured in DMEM 10% FCS using standard tissue culture protocols. One day before transfection, split COS1 cells into new 100 by 20 millimeter dishes to approximately 2 times 10 to the 6 cells per plate and incubate at 37 degrees Celsius. On the following day, the COS1 cells should be 80 to 95 percent confluent. Allow the Fugene 6 transfection reagent, which is stored at 4 degrees Celsius, to warm up to room temperature. While waiting for the fugene to warm, label 1.5 milliliter polypropylene microfuge tubes for each plasma DNA to be transfected. Being careful not to touch the sidewall of the tubes, add 6 microliters of fugene 6 to the tubes, which should already contain 94 microliters of Optimum media. Incubate for 5 minutes at room temperature. Add 1 to 2 micrograms of plasmid for ranilla luciferase antigen fusion construct. Mix by inverting the tube several times. Centrifuge briefly and incubate at room temperature for 15 minutes. Transfer the entire DNA Fugene 6 Optimum solution to the cells by dripping it evenly into the media of the COS1 cells. Incubate transfected COS1 cells for two days, then harvest. To begin harvesting fusion protein, remove media and wash the cells with 6 milliliters of PBS. Pipe it away any residual PBS from the tissue culture dish. Add 1.4 milliliters of cold lysis buffer and harvest cells with a cell scraper. and quickly transfer half of the lysate to each of two 1.5 milliliter microfuge tubes on ice. A Branson Sonifier 150 is used to break the cells open. Place the microcentrifuge tube containing the cell lysate on ice and pulse for 5 seconds, 5 seconds, and 5 seconds with sonication settings of 2, 2, and 4 respectively. Centrifuge the cell lysate at 12,500 RPM for two 4 minute spins at 4 degrees Celsius, gently inverting the tubes between spins to remove the loosely attached debris from the sidewall of the tube. Then carefully transfer the supernatant, without disrupting the pellet, from the two tubes to a new microfuge tube on ice. To measure the light units, or LU, of the lysate, Dilute 1 microliter of lysate with 8 microliters of PBS in a new microfuge tube. Directly add 100 microliters of 1x cylenterazine substrate to the diluted mixture and immediately measure luminescence in the tube 
using a tube luminometer with a 5 second read. From this step forward, remember to use safety precautions when working with human and animal sera samples. To make a sera master plate, the source of patient antibodies for antigen profiling, first add 450 microliters of buffer A to each well of a 96 deep well polypropylene microtiter plate. At this step, a dye, phenol red, can also be included in buffer A to act as a tracer for monitoring future sera sample addition and other steps of the LIPS assay. Next, add 50 microliters of sera from each sample to each well containing 450 microliters of buffer A. Note this is a 1 to 10 dilution of the sera in buffer A. Typically, sera is not added to the last two wells of the master plate because this is reserved for the buffer blanks. Before storing the master plate for future use, it is extensively shaken for 1 to 2 hours on a rotator platform at 650 RPM. The serum is stable for at least one month or longer at 4 degrees Celsius, and the plate can be sealed with parafilm to prevent evaporation if it will be stored. Prior to running the LIPS assay, organize a spreadsheet containing the sample identification numbers and their associated wells on the master plate. Polypropylene 96 shallow well microtiter plates are used as working plates to test sera. In the first step, add 40 microliters of buffer A to each well of the 96 well plate using an 8 channel micropipette. Next, take 10 microliters of diluted sera from the master plate and add it directly to each well of the working plate using an 8 channel micropipette. After use, seal the master plate with parafilm, replace the lid on the master plate, then cover with saran wrap and store at 4 degrees Celsius. A master mix containing the Rook antigen extract is next formulated such that 1 times 10 to the 7th LU is added in 50 microliters of buffer A to each well. Make this master mixture and pipette 50 microliters of Rook antigen mixture to each well. Cover the plate with a polystyrene plate cover and incubate on a rotary shaker at 100 RPM for 1 hour at room temperature. During the incubation, Retrieve a 1.5 milliliter aliquot of a 30% Ultralink protein AG bead suspension in PBS from the fridge. Add 5 microliters to the bottom of each well of a new 96 well filter HTS plate. After the 1 hour plate incubation, transfer the 100 microliters of Rook antigen antibody reaction mixture to 96 well filter HTS plates containing the protein AG beads using an 8-channel micropipette. Incubate the 96-well filter plate on a rotary shaker for one additional hour at 100 RPM at room temperature. Next, wash the filter plate using a Biomech FX automation workstation with a vacuum manifold. Each well is washed 8 times with 100 microliters of buffer A, followed by 2 times with 100 microliters of PBS. Following the last wash, the vacuum is turned off. Remove the filter plate and blot it dry using a stack of paper towels or filter paper, making sure to remove moisture on the top and bottom of the plate. A Berthold LB960 Centro microplate luminometer is used for determining luminescence in each well of the plate. Turn the machine on and rinse the injector with distilled water using the injector wash cycle. Selenterazine substrate is used for priming and running the machine and is prepared using the Promega Ranilla substrate kit following manufacturer's instructions. Typically, 6 milliliters of 1x selenterazine substrate mix is needed for one plate. Load the substrate mixture into the luminometer. Open a program file containing the setting for injecting the substrate and reading the plate.
For these measurements, 50 microliters of cilantrozine substrate is injected, the plate is shaken for 2 seconds, followed by a 5 second read of luminescence. Start the program, which initiates reading of the plate. After the run, remove the microtiter filter plate promptly to prevent spillage in the luminometer. The data is automatically exported from the MicroWin program into an Excel format for further analysis. Averaging results for two different runs with the same CIRA, in order to generate LU titer values for each sample, is recommended. The duplicate samples should show high concordance in titer values between the two runs. For data plotting, the LU titer values can further be adjusted to subtract the buffer blanks. As shown here, the sensitivity and specificity of the assay can also be calculated by utilizing cutoffs derived from the mean plus three or five standard deviations of the control samples. We've just shown you how to measure antibody titers using LIPS. LIPS requires minimal assay optimization and because of its simplicity, can be used to generate high quality data in under two weeks for any given antigen. When working with human sera, it is important to remember to take appropriate safety precautions. And keep in mind, LIPS is highly scalable, and because of this, can be used to measure a small number of samples using manual washing or a full plate using a robotic working station. With such versatility, we think LIPS will be highly useful in sera antigenic analysis and have broad implications in disease analysis and the public health in general. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching and good luck with your antibody profiling experiments.